We are here with Marcus Davis, and Marcus, yesterday I spoke to you, and you looked like you had just gone through a terrible weight cut. I felt yeah. terrible bugging you for an interview. Oh, man, it was uh, bad. I actually will say you you almost look better right now, but yeah. uh, it's still, uh, you got to be very happy with your performance on Friday night. Well, you know, I'm not. I'm glad I won. Uh, I thought I won every round, um, but. You know, the weight cut really, really, really hurt me this time, and you know, but, uh, you know, it's a win. Do you somewhat blame the problems with the weight cut on, on the travel issues you had, or is it something that... That, that it, definitely has to do with it, you know. Um, I should have been, I, I'm very, okay, like, I'm so meticulous about everything, like everything that I've eaten, every bit of exercise I've done, every calorie I've burned, every calorie I've take it, taken in, I have documented. I document my weight three times a day. I knew that I would be cutting nine pounds the day of the, 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 the weigh-in. Because of the, the layovers and because of the three cancellations, because of getting held up at the border, because I ended up coming in hours and hours and hours later, not anything messing up my whole weight and everything and retaining all that water. I ended up cutting 15 pounds that day. So it just was too much. It was hard. Have you, uh, has Canada almost uh, scared you away from returning to the country? Oh, no, no, not at all. I married a Canadian and then divorced the Canadian. So, but uh, you no, know, not at all. I fought, uh, I've never lost in Canada. As a boxer, I fought over here, P Prince Edward Island. I, I, I fought the actual champion and I beat him. And then I fought uh, Goulet and knocked out Goulet, and uh, um, and then and then this one. So, no, I have no problem with coming to Canada and fighting. What impressed or surprised you the most about uh, Curtis Demaris on Friday night? Um, you know, well, what surprised me was how good of a chin he has. He has a very good chin. I mean, solid knees, and I hit him, and I staggered him a couple times, but I couldn't put him away. Um, and then. Um, I uh, was impressed by the way that he was able to take that outside angle away from me. He really did his homework, and that's why you know my plan was to take the outside angle and use my uppercut and come back with my hook, which is how I knocked out Jonathan Goulet. Um, that's what I, my plan was with him because he drops his head. But because of the way he was taking that outside angle, I couldn't use the punch, so I used the knee instead. You went through a very hard three rounds tonight, but you're feeling that you could be back uh, in June if need oh, be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. Who, who um, I mean, in terms of the MSC lightweight picture right now, I mean, uh, is there anyone that really stands out for you as someone? Well, this the kid that, called, you know, that he fought before, and I thought Curtis beat him, that Richie Whitson kid, has already called me out. He already said that he wants to fight the winner, that he wants to fight me. So I'll fight that kid, you know. He wants to fight. Let's fight. We'll fight him in June. Awesome. If Richie Whitson is watching this, yeah. beware. Yeah, be re you know, this ain't happy days there, Richie Cunningham. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you get, you call me out, you get what you pay, you know, and what you want, you're going to get it. My last uh, question for you uh, is in terms of uh, the MFC traditionally, they compete inside of a ring. This time, yeah. being in Ontario was a cage. What differences do you have to make uh, in terms of your stand-up ability and whatnot in terms of uh, competing in a ring? Should that be your next fight in June? Oh, a ring is, uh, is much easier to defend takedowns. It's definitely helps strikers. Uh, it, you know, a cage, you can't move. So when you get pushed up against a cage, uh, you can't kick your hips underneath the, the, the cage. You can't you know, uh, throw your legs underneath the cage when you sprawl. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can get away with bouncing on the, on, on the ropes uh, to help with, with, with stopping takedown. So a cage is unforgiving. You can use the cage as a weapon. You can push people against it, crunch them up, use your elbows. It's a big difference, but it doesn't matter to me, you know. I had 15 appearances in the UFC. I've had over, you know, uh, you know my... Uh, it depends on where you look at my record, but I've had over 30 MMA, professional MMA fights. And then I've had, you know, I couldn't even tell you how many boxing matches when you take my amateur and professional career. So ring, cage, it doesn't matter. I fight wherever. Were you primarily uh, based out of Boston uh, preparing for this fight with uh, Sityo Tong? No, uh, I did not go down to Sityo Tong, which uh, Mark Delagrati, love you, man. Um, he's, he was really busy, had a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I stayed at my camp uh, in uh, Brewer, Maine and trained with Team Irish MMA there. Uh, but, uh, you know, Mark will always be my MMA coach. Uh, and Garth Crane, too. You know, Garth is, uh, 
he's running my camps now, and uh, you know we'll, we'll, we'll see Mark again. Um, but uh, right now, you know uh, Garth Grain's running everything. Awesome. Well, we wish you all the best of success, Marcus, and we hope to see you back up here in Canada very soon. Thank you very much.